small caddis. We had a little black, dark caddis. It's small, 18. Mm -hmm. And when it starts bouncing, especially when it's, it's kind of a cloudy day like this, uh, the fish really key on them. go two or three feet for them. He said you have an ultra caddis. It looks quite interesting. Well, it's a little different than your traditional caddis. It's, uh, this caddis is the one that uh, I developed for kind of a film fly. Mm -hmm. That's what we need. Uh, basically, it's a, it can be fished as an emerger or it can be fished as an adult, but the key is that it rides right in the film. This is mm -hmm. an extremely difficult fly to see on the water. Uh, not one you want to start out with, but when you've got really challenging fish like we've got here, we've worked them over a little bit, now we're changing hatches, but they still know we're here. Mm -hmm. This is the fly I go to. It's a right in the film fly, extremely, you know, effective for fish, that, especially fish that have been worked over. Well, I'm gonna tie it on. I'm gonna tie it on right now. Let's see what happens. Go after it. Did you see that fish? Up there? I did. Yeah, he's it's right up against the... Good thing you're beating the, me to it. I know, I, I just saw a caddis pop right off the, off that uh, uh, green vegetation, and the minute it hit, that fish took it. He saw it It'll bounced be, three times and it took it. That'll be the one. But I guess, uh, you know, you said this is all deer hair? Every bit of it. Well, let's see it tied first. I'll do it. Well, the ultra caddis was designed uh, for low riding caddis, emergent caddis, spent caddis. It's kind of an all arounder. Uh, it's a really difficult fly to see in the film. Uh, I don't really add anything to make it more visible. The wings a little bit shows a little bit, but it's really designed to stay way down in the film. Just sometimes even fish it sunk. It's a nice cross imitator also. It's got um, can be fished in the darker colors for a a uh, midge emerger. It can be all kinds of little terrestrial stuff, but uh, it was designed for a caddis, and it's a really effective fly. It's a little bit tricky to tie the first couple of them, but after that it gets pretty easy. Uh, it floats really well, needs very little dressing, and what we're going to do is we're going to start with a piece of uh, short fine deer hair, and the short fine deer hair, uh, this one as you can see is pretty picked over. Obviously I use a lot of olive caddis, and to change the color of this fly, you simply uh, change the color of deer hair. But uh, I'm going to start with an olive caddis. We saw a couple darker caddis yesterday. The hooks can be uh, whatever, you know, this is a 9300 Tiemco, I believe. Uh, I use some 531 Tiemcos, but I don't think it's as relative to the type of hook. It's just that it's a short shanked hook. I'm going to use some ADOT thread here, some ADOT uni thread. Start three quarters of the way up the hook, where you, and I like to do that so I know where to stop my materials. I'm going to have the I'm going to have the shank of the hook bare right to here, and that tells me that's where I'm going to stop when I go forward with the uh, the body. And this body's a little tricky to tie. Uh, the first couple you do again, this is deer hair. Like anything else, when you do with deer hair, you've got to pick all this under fur out of here and just clean that up a little bit. And this is going to, you have to use half as much deer hair as you think you'd use. If you use as much as it looks like the body is in the photos, like for example in the book, you have to realize that I'm going to fold this back over, you'll see that in a second, but you want to use half as much as you anticipate. And I'm going to go back to the forward portion of that, I'm going to tie in at the tips, I've got the thick part of the hair back, and I'm going to wrap this not real tight, just as you can see, I'm creating a segment to the body, and I'm just trying to get it all the way around the hook. And the reason I don't tie this portion in really tight here is because it's creating an air, air packet, air, excuse me, an air pocket inside there. So when I wrap this back around, I've doubled the flow to the hair. When you get right here, you want to cinch down just a little bit tighter on this one. Not so much that you start cutting your hair, and you'll cut a few, but not all of them. 
excuse me here, right back here. Now we're just going to separate this hair around the hook, get it forward just a little bit, make sure you don't have any stragglers hanging out here. And then I'm going to do a first couple of the tricky ones so you don't knock the point of the hook and cut your thread. And you've got it crossing your hands over here, nice even segments. Try to hold on to that hair as much as you can all the way forward until you get to where you... And I frequently have to just pull the hair back and take a quick look roughly where I want to be. If you, after you tie a few of them, you'll get it so you'll know pretty much it's five turns or six turns depending on the size of the hook. Then we're going to clip all this off. So what you've got there is a, it's a very even uh, body shape, nice and smooth. It's equally segmented just like a, the abdomen would be on a normal caddis. Next we're going to put in the wing, fine deer hair. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to use natural deer hair and I use natural on every one of the flies. I don't use, I don't match it all the way through but most of the wings are a dark, ton, uh, dark dun or a natural dun like the, the deer hair here. So I'm going to cut a, just a little piece here for the wing. There's no real rule of thumb on how much wing to tie in here. It's just a lot of that has to do with the quality of the hair you're using or you know, the, the size of the fly you're tying. But what's really critical, again, is to take all, all of this stuff under fur uh, out of the fly. There's three types of hair. There's, in, there's three types of hair in the clump that you're going to get. There's under fur. There's directional hair and there's guard hair, and the under fur is really got to go because that stops any type of flaring to the hair. And it, when it's in there, it doesn't really allow the hair to sit, settle into the hook very well. I have to stack this, so just whatever you use for a stacker. As you can see, from what I started with to what I end up with in the stacker is about a third of what I ended up with from taking all that under fur and hair out. So, and everything's going to lay right down in the water like the natural does. Now I'm going back to the uh, olive short fine deer hair and I'm going to cut a small piece. Again, I'm going to clean it all out, get all that under fur stuff out of there. Again, it's kind of a guesstimate on how much hair you're going to need here, but it's obviously going to be a very small head. I like to cut the uh, tips of that hair off because I've got less to deal with when I spin this. And two wraps around, let it spin keep chasing the hair until it quits spinning. As you see, I'm, I'm going right through the hair. It's, it's a little tougher than bigger heads here to, to trim this little stuff and to get it to set in, but just keep chasing it. When I say that, I mean to follow the thread right through the original path until it quits spinning around the hook. And just find your way through the hair, get to the head. She's pretty much done right there. Do your whip. Now, one thing you can do when you're trimming this head out, if you want, um, I haven't, I frequently do it on my own. This is where I have to put on the old guy glasses so I can see most of it. Um, you can trim it, you want to trim the bottom flush, but if you want to, just for effect, you can go in and leave, when you're cutting this, leave a half dozen legs sticking out to the side if you want to. Uh, real easy to give it a leggy effect. I'll do one side that way. <clears throat> Just kind of cutting every other one. I'll do the other side how I do it. I used to leave these legs on all of them and now I uh, never leave the legs on them unless I'm tying it for a 
uh, dancing caddis or an egg laying caddis is their, is what they're doing. The flies are going to skate on the surface and you're going to actually fish it with movement. Where it, you know, in the evening when the, the equivalent to the egg layers or the equivalent to the spinner fall comes back for a caddis, uh, they're really active. And a lot of the, the dippers, when they run and they drop their eggs on the surface, they make a lot of commotion. And so, you, you know, you've got to dance them a little bit. So we'll leave these legs out. It just makes a little bit more realistic. That's how you do that. One side, I've only got one side done. You just leave two or three legs out to the edge. It gives a real buggy look to it, but I haven't seen it make a big difference. So generally, I just go ahead and trim those off so they'd all be the same as this side. But you can see there that, that that's all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off a little bit. This has pretty much been my go-to fly at this point for any caddis situation. I fish this uh, a lot on the Madison where they have really prolific caddis hatches. Um, in the broken white water like below slide in uh, where you just think you'd need a really well-dressed fly but you know like with a heavy hackle but I've never found it to be uh, any less effective just a little harder to see. But so you can see it's pretty, uh, get it around here. It's got a nice little profile from the underside. Its head, if you look at a natural caddis, the head is uh, a little bit wider. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better from the bottom. You can see that it's nice, nicely tapered. The abdomen is showing the segmentation. The head's there, nice wing, it sits right when this fly sits in the water, it's going to sit with this abdomen down in right here, and it's going to ride right on these wing tips, or, you know, the, the hair tips, and it's going to ride with its abdomen right down in. And if you sparsely tie this wing, if you do the same fly with a, in black or red, it's a great midge imitation because it rides right down in there just like a natural does. Again, it's a little hard to see, and it's a little hard to get used to fishing caddis. You think we've been fishing elk or caddis forever, um, you know, with the, all the traditional hackle and wrapped underneath it. But what I found back, especially in Michigan, where I was fishing smaller caddis, that if I used an elk hair with the with the hackle all the way through here, it, way, it rode way too high, especially for our early caddis, the black caddis, which are 18s. And uh, we'd, we'd end up trimming all this off on the bottom anyway to get it right in the film. So I just eliminated all of it with this and then had a lot better success.